Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do Naruto Chapter 596 Review. Now, this chapter of Naruto, people, if you are confused, be confused no longer. Because the King of Lightning knows exactly what's going on. I know exactly what is going on. The space-time migration is beaten. It is beaten. Oh. You see, it's like when you think about it, it actually makes sense. It actually makes sense. So if you are confused, be confused no longer because the King of Lightning will tell you exactly what occurred at the end of this chapter. It can be one of three things, and I, I'll get I'll get into that later. Uh, but actually, I just realized that this chapter is four chapters away from the big 600. So, you know, a milestone for the Naruto series, yet again, you know, but whatever. So basically, this chapter starts off, let's dive right in. This chapter starts off, and Kakashi, my guy, Naruto, they're looking at Tobi, and they realize that Tobi has a scratch on his mask. And Guy and Naruto are assuming... That this was that that this was because of Naruto's punch. The Naruto's punch somehow connected, but Kakashi is assuming differently. And before Kakashi can make his deduction, what happens is that Killer B goes in there half cocked. Like he really goes in there half cocked. He's like, Wee, wait, open, yeah. And then all of a sudden, what happens? Well, what happens is Uchiha bullshit once again. The Uchiha clan pulling out all the fucking stops. It's like. What else can you guys do? Now, Toby makes up. It actually looks very similar of that five of that five seal thing that uh, that Jiraiya did to uh, Naruto back in the day. I'm not sure what it was called back in the day. Basically, it's the same hand gesture with the fire or like with the chakra flames. He presses down. He says, "I think it was uh, Uchiha Kanenji." I'm not too sure. And then all of a sudden, a barrier appears surrounding the Gezo Mazo statue. And if you touch it, it burns you. And I was like, when the fuck did this come out? Like, are you, like, more Uchiha shit? Now, now they can do barriers? Like, like, what the fuck? Now they can do barriers. It's like, literally, the Uchiha clan are reaching behind them, and they're taking shit out of their asses. Like, yeah, hey, you know? It's like, what the fuck is going on? Like, like, seriously. Like, what's up with the Uchiha clan? They're pulling yo, people! You, you understand? They're literally pulling shit out of their asses. It's like, come on. Like, what's going on? Yo. Barriers. I mean, I thought that the Uzumakis were known for their barriers and their ceiling techniques. But apparently, no, no, no. By the way, we Uchiha, we have a set of our own. Like, yeah, yeah, you you have that, you have fire styles, you have fucking Amaterasu, you got fucking Susanoo's, perfect Susanoo's. You can, you, you, ah, like, your basic Sharingans can predict moves to a certain degree. It's like, what the fuck? It's like, seriously. And, and that right there is the tip of the iceberg of the Uchiha clan. Like, seriously, it's, it's ridiculous. But, um, uh, but yeah, whatever. So basically... He is defended, and then Kakashi finally tries to put his assumption to play, because he figures out, or he makes the, or he makes the deduction that the reason why he has a scratch on his mask was because of the Kamui. I believe it's called the Kamui, which is, uh, which is Kakashi's Mangeku Sharingan space-time ability. So what happens here is that he requires the assistance of Mighty Guy, Naruto, Killer B. And, of course, himself, Kakashi. Duh, obviously. And what happens here is that Killer B, they grab Naruto, Guy Kakashi. He throws them at Tobi. My guy goes in first with some, you know, with his dragon nunchucks. Memento of Bruce Lee. That's right. And what happens is that, uh, did I say Rock Lee? Did I say Rock Lee? I meant Guy. I'm the fuck it. Fuck it, right? Fuck it. So, basically... <laughs> Guy goes in there with the nunchucks and he attacks Toby. Toby blocks appropriately. Naruto comes behind Guy with the Rasengan. And then this is when Toby starts using the space time migration. The Rasengan phases through Toby. And then as the Rasengan is nearing Toby's face, the Rasengan disappears. And this is when Kakashi uses the Kamui or his space time jutsu. And it disappears into like that little tiny circle thing. 
And what happens is that as Naruto and Tobi are crossing each other, and they and then Naruto phases out of Tobi, what happens is that all of a sudden there's an explosion on Tobi's right hand side, and he gets blown back, and all of a sudden he realizes that, and well, basically he he gets blown back by an explosion. And we can assume that the explosion was from the Rasengan that disappeared via Kamui. And Toby starts talking to Kakashi about how he didn't make Naruto's Rasengan disappear. In fact, he threw the Rasengan with the uh, Kamui. And that's the thing. That's when Kakashi figures it out. And he says, and he says right here, just like I thought, at first. I thought that he had two jutsus for going, oh, well, I thought that he had two jutsus, one for going transparent and another for taking objects out, but that isn't the case. You only have one jutsu. Now, let me explain, and that right there is the end of the chapter, Kakashi pointing at Toby, looking all badass. Now, let me tell you what happened at the end of this chapter, if you're confused, all right? When Toby goes transparent, what happens is that he performs a jutsu called space-time migration, which allows his body to exist in a separate dimension as opposed to the physical realm. His body, when he performs the space-time migration, is in a different dimension. When Kakashi performs Kamui, the objects go into a different dimension. You see where I'm getting this, okay? So if the objects are going into a different dimension, and if Toby's body exists in a different dimension, then one of three things is possible. Either A, the object that Kakashi sent to a, to a different dimension and Toby's body are existing in the same dimension, which is why the attacks are hitting. Number two, the dimensions themselves cancel out and thus the kunai or the rasengan can affect toby or number three the dimensions cross each other and thus are able to affect each other on a physical level that is what it, that is what occurred either one of those either one of those three things either one they cancel out either two they are the same dimension or three the dimensions cross that is why he is able to affect toby right now I'm going number three. The dimensions are crossing because we can see because because we can still see Toby, even though his body exists in another dimension. We can still see Toby. However, the kunai it disappears, so it's clearly so it's clearly a different dimension. I believe so. However, however, because Toby and the kunai or the Rasengan are in such close vicinity, then these dimensions cross each other. And for some reason are able to physically interact with each other. That's the reason why Kakashi is able to actually damage Toby. That's the reason why. Kakashi is literally the key to beating Toby. That's kind of a uh, kind of hints that maybe Toby can be Obito. Oh my god! Obito! I don't care. <laughs> Yo, I'm okay. I don't care who he is, but I will say is that the end of the chapter, on point. It was on point. I'm not gonna lie, Kishimoto, good ending, good ending. Now that we now see, cause see, I knew what happened. Okay, if you don't know what happened, then the chapter may seem like bullshit. But if you do know what happened, then 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 it's actually pretty good. So this chapter of Naruto, even though the fight's pretty slow, and it's okay. I wish, I really wish. That Killer B would do more shit. Overall, this chapter is a good chapter. Good chapter. Kakashi is the key of beating Toby. And Toby may in fact be Obito. Because, well, why else is Kakashi so relevant? Why else is Kakashi so relevant when it comes to actually harming Toby? I'm just saying. There has to be a connection, and the connection... I mean, someone told me... Someone told me that Kakashi... No, no, someone told me that uh, that Toby is Kakashi's father. I was like, dude, are you out of your fucking mind? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Stupid. No. Even though, in my personal opinion, I would prefer 
Toby not to be Obito, it is trending towards that route. Do I care? No. I don't care. I don't give a shit. So, with that being said, King of Lightning, this chapter of Naruto, it was good. The ending is what made it good. The pacing overall, it's okay. I wish I saw Mike Guy and Killer B do a lot more shit. But but Killer B is still doing something here and there. And my guy is in, and my guy is getting pretty solid time. Even though I wish it was Rock Lee. But you know, whatever. And Naruto is still doing the basic Rasengan, Rasengan, Rasengan! Mm, you know, all that shit. So okay, fine, whatever. But Kakashi is the key. And the space-time migration is beat. The space-time migration is beat. So I'll see you guys later. King of Lightning, be sure to rate, comment, and as always, subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Peace. Have a nice day.